Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this Blitz Test Postmortem, a postmortem of my Blitz game number 361. Um, I was black here, my opponent kicked off with d4 and I saw my chance. I've been wanting to try out the uh, Grunfeld defense, so uh, I played this. A lot of times my opponents will just play knight f3, which is sort of an anti-Grunfeld move, but c4 is the main move, and then g6, and uh, knight c3 are following along the main lines. I suppose knight f3 was still possible there. And now, um, if you play bishop g7, it sort of forfeits your chance to play the Grunfeld. The characteristic move of the Grunfeld is uh, d5. But after bishop g7, white can play um, e4, and then d5 is really difficult. So if you're going to play the Grunfeld, you have to play the d5 right here. And then now, knight f3 is the second choice. We look at it. The main line is to take. Knight takes. Pawn to e4. Knight takes knight. Pawn takes knight. And white has this really big center here with three pawns on c3, d4, and e4, and uh, black has nothing in the center, but uh, he sets about undermining the center, and that's kind of the theme of the Grunfeld, which is to uh, encourage white to build a center, maybe push it a little too far, overextend, and then undermine it. So knight f3 is a sensible way to play, uh, not, not falling for the Grunfeld strategy, although there's nothing wrong with the main line either. Of course, that's generally the way I play when I have white. And then here, um, the usual way to follow up this knight f3 line is with queen b3, uh, just immediately putting pressure on this deep pawn and asking uh, asking Black how he intends to defend it. Let's see. Other ways to play are C takes D5, going into a similar line where you can uh, take back and push away or attack the knight with E4, um, or Bishop to G5, uh, just uh, putting some pressure on the knight. Uh, but my opponent played E3, a respectable line. And now I make a mistake, actually. This Bishop G4 move, it looked... Uh, natural to me at the time, but it has a, a flaw. So the main move here, if we back up, is either c6. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, actually I was aware of the c6 move. This would transpose into a type of Slav defense known as the uh, Schlechter Slav, where uh, the bishop is fianchettoed, but the, we have the Slav pawn formation over here. Um, but I was trying to avoid that. Um, so if I want to stay in pure Grinfeld lines, I should castle here, I guess. That's uh, the main line, and it looks like that's a engine-approved move. Um, so I played the move bishop to g5, and that just has a mistake. <laughs> that has a flaw to it. Basically, queen b3 is now a double attack, hitting the pawn here and hitting the undefended uh, b pawn. And uh, really, I should have uh, known this because this is a similar tactic is always available in the Slav defense. <laughs> and uh, if you look at it, there there are a lot of similarities between the Slav and the the Grunfeld. So. Uh, and this is one of them. You have to watch out when you're moving the bishop away from c1. You leave the c8. You leave the b7 pawn undefended. Well, my opponent didn't uh, take advantage of this. He played bishop d3, and we're, we're out of the opening book here. We'll just look at the notation tab. He played bishop d3. A reasonable developing move, but, you know, just not the best move in the position when he could take advantage of that. So I took here, and um, that was the idea, by the way. Uh, black a lot of times wants to take to relieve this tension in the center and not fall prey to these queen b3 traps. Um, but he would like to do it at a point after uh, after white has made a, a, some other move with the bishop or the queen. So after queen b3 I would take, or after bishop d3 I would take, and force that piece to make a second move. So it's uh, gaining a tempo, giving up the center in exchange for gaining a tempo. That's That's the plan here. Because you need some activity with your pieces in the grid field. Your, your, your plan is to give up the center, so you need compensation in some form. And usually that form is in piece activity. So by uh, <clears throat> inflicting some tempo loss on your opponent, you're helping your pieces uh, get out and get more active. Um, so anyway, that's why I played bishop g4. It was a waiting move to see if he would develop his bishop. But that's also why uh, castling is good in this position. Okay, so bishop g4 was played, bishop d3, and now I take. He takes back. And I castle. So uh, we're, we're in a fine uh, Grinfeld-like position here. He goes uh, knight bd7. <coughs> no, it's my turn. I, I keep developing. The immediate c5 is uh, an interesting move here. Um, of course, white can take it, but uh, I guess I get a lot of counterplay. Let's check this out, because I'm, I'm always looking for uh, the, the more precise way to play. If you can get this move in c5 immediately without having to prepare it, then uh, that's good. So say knight bd7 now, trying to round it up. And if he plays b5, ah, that's that's the, the problem. Um, 
it weakens this diagonal and now you've got a pin on the knight potentially you just move this knight away with attack on the knight and you're, you may be picking up the rook in the corner so b4 knight e4 is interesting for uh, white knight takes e4 bishop takes e1 so you win the exchange <laughs> you win the exchange uh, and uh, white wins a pawn so uh, and it's about even actually the compensation is there for uh, white in this case so that's that's one way to go immediate c5 i played knight bd7 to uh, prepare c5 and he went with uh, e4 grabbing more space in the center and i go with c5 now not not fearing this pawn push because as i say the strategy is kind of to encourage uh encourage white to overextend and e5 it looks like is a, a move too far um, I, you know it does drive my knight back but now, how is how is uh, White going to support all these pawns? He makes he plays a move Queen D3 here, and that's just a mistake. It looks like uh, he has to take immediately because there's just no way to uh, defend this pawn. Otherwise, you'll see what happens in the game. So if he were to take, um, then uh, I was thinking I would just take back. It looks like uh, maybe Queen C8 first. Um, is there something wrong with taking? Is there a tactical problem? Bishop g5. Yeah, a little bit of pressure here on the e-pawn. Bishop takes f3. Queen takes f3. And knight e6. Well, okay. I mean, it seems like a way to play to me, but the engine thinks uh, that's not good for black. So um, queen to uh, c8 here. Pressure on this pawn, and then e6. Okay, we get a typical complicated kind of position. Uh, bishop takes e6. Yeah, he can trade off and double my pawns. And uh, I'll eventually win this pawn, it looks like. But uh, bishop g5, once again going after this guy. And uh, bishop takes c3, creating doubled c pawns. And knight e to f6, this knight. Okay, blocking the bishop. Okay, interesting position. There's defects on both sides' pawn structure. Um, and uh, the game would continue from there. Okay, knight e8 I played, and he played queen d3. And this is just a bad move, and, and probably losing. Although uh, I don't always play the best moves from here on out, of course. But now I can just take this pawn, and when he takes back, I can grab the pawn in the center. Um, oh yeah, I need to take on f3 first. The knight's still defending it. But that uh, disorders his pawns on the king side and allows me to pick up here. I played bishop takes e5. The engine likes knight takes e5 a little better. Maybe I can see that. Knight takes e5 sets up a uh, discovered attack on the queen. But it does allow him to trade out. Um, yeah, so this, the way I play keeps the queens on the board. Okay, so he went queen to e4. And now I play queen to c7. He's attacking this pawn. This is apparently not the most precise move. So knight to d6 immediately. Ah, knight to d6, yeah. Get this knight developed. It's back on the back rank where it was chased. Comes out with a tempo on the queen and defends the uh, b pawn. So yeah, knight d6. Excellent move there. So I played queen c7. It's just not as good. And now with knight d5, he could equalize. Yeah, that's what I realized after I put my queen on c7. He has these knight jumps, knight d5 and knight b5. In this case, knight d5 is the better move. Um, and white is equalized. So I've kind of given up my uh, opportunities there. But he plays this move, <laughs> f4. And now knight d6 is really um, kind of a killer move, which I didn't spot. But it's forking the queen and the bishop because the bishop is undefended. It under defended. The queen is already attacking it. So it's kind of loose already. It's only it's attacked once and defended once, so one more attacker on it, and it's uh, gone. So I trade here first, which is fine, and uh, now I should play knight to uh, e6, d6, knight to d6 with the fork of the queen and the bishop, winning a piece. So I missed that during the game. I played knight d to f6 and tried to unwind this way. Yeah, it keeps an advantage, but uh, of course the winning a piece would have finished the game right there. The queen dropped back to e2, keeping his bishop defended. Now knight d6 hits the bishop. And at this point, yeah, I was already regretting. I recognized <laughs> in the game that the, I had missed my chance. Um, but I still have an edge. So he um, plays bishop to b3. Knight d 
to e4, try to get my pieces active. Bishop to b2, queen to d7. So my plan was to try and come over here on the king side. Let's back up. That kind of dropped my evaluation. Rook a to d8 is a better move here. Or queen takes f4. Oh, well, yeah, this pawn was just hanging. <laughs> I could have just grabbed that pawn. Also, developing the rooks it makes a lot of sense. It's interesting that either either rook, rook a to d8 or rook f to d8, um, I, would, I would be inclined to move the f rook there so the, the, d, the other rook could come to the c file. Um, but either rook to the d8 square looks good. Okay, queen d7. Not the best move. Rook a to d1. Harassing my queen, I jump over here to h3. This is my plan. And now he lifts his rook to attack my queen. It looks like f3 is a better move here. Yeah, f3 just controls more squares around his uh, <clears throat> around his king and opens up the, the second rank for his queen to defend. So this move is, uh, eh, it's not a terrible move, but it may be a bit of a waste of tempo. I drop back here. I'm hitting the f-pawn, and I'm... Uh, <clears throat> Are there other threats here? I still intend to bring my knight in here and try and gang up on the h-pawn. And I thought I was doing pretty good because I realized the uh, the rook can't come over here to defend. But what he can do, and he, he played this move, f3, it's a good move because it controls this g4 square, kicks my knight, and now I um, need to retreat somewhere. I played knight to c5, you know, moving the knight with a tempo so I can reposition maybe to uh, e6 perhaps. Um, so his rook moves to d4, probably the best choice, defending f4. And now... Um, I decide to take on b3. It looks like knight to h5 right away would have been playable. I, I wanted to play knight h5, but I thought maybe it'd be better to get rid of this uh, bishop first. Hmm. Or rook f to e8. Yeah, getting my rooks in the game also can't be wrong. <laughs> it is a good idea in this case. Okay, so this doesn't give up the advantage because I still have knight h5 here. and um, But my advantage is much smaller. And it, Actually, this is in the range of where uh, where white could possibly draw. But he plays f5. And so this is one, well, maybe his last mistake here. Queen g5 check just picks up the pawn. He played rook to g4. I grabbed the pawn. And he played um, c4. Yeah, that's one of the options here. It's uh, not bad. c4. And uh, I played rook a to d8, finally. Finally getting my rook into the game. And um, I did have ideas of trying to get to the second rank here somehow, although it's not immediately available. Maybe I can only get to the, uh, let's erase that. Maybe I can only get to the third rank for now where it's supported by the queen, but that would also be interesting. Um, and uh, he ran out of time here. I mean, it's a difficult position for, uh, for white to defend. I do have all these ideas like the check on this diagonal. Um, that's, but let's follow it a little bit. So the, um, the engine gives a winning advantage to black. Uh, with the moves, uh, queen takes e7, rook f to e8. Yeah, so I get my both my rooks on open files. Queen to h4, getting over here to defend. And now rook to d2. Yeah, so I get a rook to the second rank. And uh, this looks pretty good. Oh, the evaluation dropped. <laughs> queen to c2. It likes better now. Well, let's go ahead and put queen rook to d2 on. Because he has this move, bishop d4 defending you know so the the um, engine has found a clever construction here <laughs> he's uh, got this bishop uh, d4 defending his king he's got uh, his queen and his rick lined up uh, protecting the bishop and uh, well the game would continue I could uh, maybe consider doubling on the second rank here mm, but the engine likes knight g7 or f6 yeah probably rerouting this knight somewhere useful Maybe knight g7 to e6 is a good idea going after this uh, strong bishop. Um, so, interesting game would have continued from here. And uh, with an advantage to black, but, uh, but not immediately over. Okay, so let's back up to the point where I played rook ad8 and my opponent ran out of time at this point. And uh, so that's how it ended. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.